Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about SQL injection. What is it? What problems can it cause? How do you do it? And how do you protect against it? And of course, I'll address the fact that SQL has been around for decades at this point. SQL injections are nothing new, and is it even an issue that you need to care about? I'll show a live demo of a SQL injection, and I'll give you the links to the demo environment so that you can practice both SQL injections and the ways to protect against SQL injections. So let's get straight into it. Before we get to the injection part, just what is SQL? Well, SQL is structured query language. It's a language for working with relational databases. Here's a typical SQL database table. You can think of it like an Excel sheet. This one contains information about people's bank account balances. SQL gives us a language and a way to work with the data in this table. We can so-called CRUD information. We can create new information in the table. We can read the information that's already there. We can update the information that's there. Or, of course, we can delete the information. So, for example, to show the balance of Joe Bloggs' account, the SQL would look something like this. And the result would look like this. Of course, you and I usually aren't allowed access to the database to run the SQL statements directly. We'll be given some sort of user interface, maybe a website with a form on it, or maybe a, a console window, where we type in some information like the surname, and that input is used in the query. So we will be asked for the surname, and the rest of the query is formatted for us. For example, imagine we type in blogs into the input and click Submit. The program would then take our blogs input and put it into the statement like this. So now that we know some of the SQL basics, what does the injection part mean? Well, injection is just a fancy way of saying that as users, we can put stuff into the statement that probably shouldn't be there. Imagine we typed fake as the surname. The SQL statement would then look like this. And of course, it wouldn't return anything because fake isn't a real surname. But now imagine we type this. It looks a bit weird, but that SQL statement is actually valid, and it would look like this. That's a SQL injection which will return every person's balance in the table. So how did it work? Well, remember that whatever we type is passed straight into the SQL statement inside the quotation marks. So first we type fake apostrophe, and that alone would return nothing. There is no surname in the table called fake. But after that, we type or true. And now, in computer terms, true is always going to be true. So you're effectively saying to the SQL engine, give me the balance of all the accounts where the surname is fake or yes, or true. The SQL engine interprets that as, OK, well, everything is true, so match every row in the database and send it on back to the user. Give them everything in the database. The final part, the semicolon, tells the SQL engine that the statement has ended and to stop processing. But remember that we have an extra apostrophe and another semicolon from the real script. If we leave those in, the whole statement would be a mess. It would be invalid and the SQL would error. So we just need a way to completely ignore those extra characters. And luckily, SQL has a handy way to do that. A double hyphen means everything after this is a comment, so please, SQL Engine, just completely ignore it. So in reality, the statement that SQL sees and executes looks like this. And as we've discussed, true is always true, so that really means give me all of the balances. You can run exactly this SQL injection attack, and again, the link to the demo scenario is in the video description. So now that you know what a SQL injection is, how do you actually protect against them? Well, the simplest and most effective way, of course, is just not to use SQL. Use something else. If you must use SQL, first, do not trust user input. Second, never try to pass or guess what a user must have been thinking. The attackers are smarter than you, and they have more time. So if the input looks wrong, just throw it away and send back an error message. Don't try and figure out what they must have meant. Now, there are techniques to slow down attackers, like using the limit keyword. So even if you're vulnerable to a SQL injection, uh, it'll slow them down. The attackers can then only get a certain number of rows at a time. However, with distributed computing being so cheap and readily available, it's not such a great protection mechanism anymore. 
Now that said, many application frameworks and CMSs provide this safety net nowadays. They will do this sanitization and this cleanup for you. But as a developer, it only takes one piece of code which forgets to use that safety net or misimplements those safety features for the whole database to be compromised. So continuing on the solution side, there are open source tools such as OpenAppSec, which will block SQL injection attacks. On the commercial side, tools like Dynatrace AppSec will watch the traffic and proactively block SQL injection attacks. Tooling also exists like SQL Map and Burp Suite, which will attempt to proactively find SQL injection issues during development and testing. Plenty of tooling exists, but is this something you even need to worry about? Well, SQL first appeared as a language in 1974, it's almost 50 years old, so surely by now SQL injection attacks are completely irrelevant. In fact, the first SQL injection attack was described in 1998. That's almost 25 years ago. And if you want to read the original description, there's a link to the Frack magazine issue in the description. So SQL injection attacks, no, they're not new or they're not novel, but they are still an issue. So you might ask, well, when was the last known SQL injection attack? Was it 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago? How about a few weeks ago? In June 2023, a SQL injection issue was discovered in Progress's MoveIt software, an enterprise file transfer product. But MoveIt are far from alone. Barracuda, Sony, TalkTalk, Talk, universities, MySQL.com itself, the British Royal Navy, all of these have fallen victim to SQL injection attacks in the recent past. So SQL injection attacks are common. And although the fixes are supposedly easy and widespread, the evidence is just it's, it's not working well enough. So now that you know, go and do some more research, learn about this. And most, most importantly, advocate for protecting your company and your applications against this oldest of vulnerabilities, because ev as evidence suggests, it is not going anywhere. As I mentioned, all of the links to the hands-on activities and the articles are in the video description. If you like this, do me a favor and give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Thank you very much for your time. And here is to a more knowledgeable and secure IT future. I'll see you all again very soon.